Don't drink soda. Check, check. Check, check. One, two. Check. Microphone, check. Is that, is that looks good? Sounds good? All right. Megaphone's working. On air, lights on. That means we're on air. Whoa. Got all the lights on. Last week, we forgot the, we're the always floor forget, light. We're always forgetting lights. We is forgot it, the table light. This, this flamingo light is on? <laughs> yeah, the flamingo light's on. Uh, all the lights are on. All the light, yeah, all the lights are on, and I think we're ready to go. Are you ready? I'm ready. I have a knife. I have a gun. You really want to do this? Maybe not. You just brought a knife to minutes. a gunfight, my friend. <laughs> That's not a fight. We're not fighting. We're friending. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, give us a countdown. Five, four, three. Yo, welcome to the Natural Habitat Podcast. My name is Mikey Booyah. And I'm the one and only Awesome Ty. That's right. And we have Computer with us, the one and only uh, artificially intelligent co-host. Computer, don't say shit. Free Candy is also here in Canada. Not, We are not in Canada. He's in Canada. Free Candy, can you hear us? He can hear us. He can't talk we, we back. We can't hear him. He never got that dongle for his microphone. It's been a whole thing. Um, thank you for taking some time and joining us today on an old school classic back to our roots. Back to our roots. None of this, none of this newfangled technology, <coughs> artificial intelligence crap. We're, we're doing away with that. We're mm-hmm. going back to where it all started. Just, yep. just us. We're going back to just, you know, Mikey and Ty and where yep. everything comes from our brains. Mikey and Ty and also computer and free candy now, but. We're going to be riffing, all right? We're going to be... Straight off the cuff. Off the cuff riffing. Off the cuff. And, you know, a lot of people, they come to podcasts, especially comedy podcasts, to uh, hear a riff, you know? Yeah, it turns out that you don't tune in just to hear us talk about AI. You probably can mm-hmm. get all that information yourself. You want to hear just two two pals riffing. Yeah. Riffing and raffing. Yeah. Even some raffing sometimes. Now, let's not get into yeah, that like too we're quick. Not, we're not let's jumping right into the, the raffing. raffing. But we're going to get into... Let's not tie. Let's, let's, not let's get into some riffing, raffing. okay? Let's not raff yet. Let's not raff yet. Okay. That's like a okay. second act reveal. Okay, my bad. Sorry. Um... So you you guys might be asking yourselves, you know, guys, why are you coming in so hot with the riffing, with the raffing? Why are you on? Why are you at eight already? See, I feel like this isn't riffing, though. Like, uh, not yet. Not yet. We're getting there. Okay. <clears throat> but we have been reading your guys' comments and girls' comments. And you're, you've been reading your comments. And uh, people have had mixed reviews. Yeah, we're putting a lot of stock into your opinions, which I've been advised not to do. Mm-mm. But sometimes we just can't. Our, our egos won't let us disregard your opinions. Yeah. So. Now, um, this uh, this guy, Music Lover 24-7, says, Man, this podcast is a mixed bag. On one hand, the hosts really know how to riff on different topics. And their chemistry, it's undeniable. Undeniable. Dude. Can't be denied. It's un- hey, <laughs> it's undeniable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking undeniable chemistry. I couldn't help but chuckle at some of their hilarious banter. Hilarious banter. banter. Now, hopefully, yeah. you guys are doing more than chuckling. You know, I'm thinking like some hearty belly laughs. You know, hearty what I mean? laugh like where it hurts your your rib cage after a while. Clap. Feel free to clap. Feel free to. Slap. Yeah, we've already established that you should be clapping like mm-hmm. regularly. Clapping. You should slap your knees. Um, you could either slap one knee like a yip, or you can. You can kind of like make a drum beat on your chest if ham you want. Hambone? I think that's called ham boning. <clears throat> that was real on, on beat there. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, here. Now do it. Is that, that's not, I don't know if that's riffing. I don't know if we're quite riffing no. with that. But um, see, I think the more we talk about riffing, the less we're going to be able to successfully pull it off. But uh, this guy says, um, overall, a decent effort, but room for improvement. Keep riffing. Fuck this guy. Okay, pothead three, six, five. Oh, great. We really care about this guy's opinion. 
Uh, he says, I have to say this podcast is a roller coaster ride. The hosts have great dynamic and their ability to riff off of each other is pure entertainment. Now, what are the odds that two back to back commenters would talk about riffing? I don't I mean, know. Is that like a. We haven't mentioned it. No. Lately. Um, however, the lack of structure in their discussions can sometimes make it hard to follow the main point. Okay. Ooh. Fair, fair. No. Fair well, observation. I don't think so. It feels like they go off on tangents way too often. If they could strike a balance between spontaneity and staying on track, the show would be amazing. Buddy, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Keep riffing. All right, it's like it's like they want the man, but they don't want the mustache. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like they um they want the best of both worlds. They they can't have it. That's not how life works. Uh, inquisitive mind Ooh, says, inquisitive "All mind. right, let's talk about this podcast." Okay. Do on it. one hand. The hosts are masters, masters of, of riffing. riffing, masters of riffing. There it is again. Um, their quick wit and ability to bounce off of each other create some truly memorable moments. Like that <laughs> one time, what was the one time uh, we're like remembering a moment, like a memorable moment of something that we said or did or a joke that we made a riff. It's all I can't remember all one, dude. It's all in the ether. I don't remember anything we've ever said on this show. Me neither, now that I think about it. Every episode's like a clean slate. Like, what, did, what did we even talk about last week? I couldn't tell you. Uh, Something to do with AI for sure, but I couldn't specifically say what. Yeah. Um, uh, God? Oh, fish tank. We talked about fish tank a lot. Fish tank. Gave like a, like a horrible description of a fish tank it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. two guys who don't understand <coughs> fish tank trying to explain fish tank to mm-hmm. somebody who's never seen it halfway through a show that you're not going to understand until a month after it finishes airing uh we tried to explain it we did our best all right stop yeah, picking did. on us but we also did some riff some riffing there was a little bit of riffing yeah maybe even raffing hey hey we're not sorry let's slow your roll with the raffing like you told me we're not raffing yet <laughs> All right. Save that for Act 2. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, so these guys, you know, they, they like it. They think that we should riff more. And they all happen to rate us two and a half stars, which seems, yeah. I mean, it seems a little sus, but no. Two, right down the middle, two and a half stars. So um, we have decided that we're going to steer away from the AI and instead of asking, we could easily ask GPT. Yeah, we're going back to our original source of information and that for longtime followers of the show, you mm-hmm. know that that is WikiHow. WikiHow. Which will teach you how to do anything and not just how to do it, but how to do it well. Mm-hmm. There's an article about literally anything that you could think of, even subgenres of ideas that you could think of. And... Uh, they'll break it down all the way with way now, too many steps. Now, what if you you took like an AI model and fed it all the information on WikiHow and and oh. like put that into like a you know like one of those Tesla bots? Yeah, and the Tesla bot would be able to do literally anything. Yeah, because it, it's it's absorbed all this WikiHow information and now it just knows. It's it just knows a poorly everything trained. About everything. Oh, like, we're, we're uh, jack of all. We're trades. going back to AI. We can't. Yeah, you're right. Um, those Tesla bots are crazy though, but we'll talk about those next week. Next week, if you guys are missing the AI stuff right now, just know that next week we're talking Tesla bots. We're talking, uh, GPT four, possibly GPT five might be out yeah, by then. So possibly five. This shit's uh, growing. We're talking about bands. We're talking about, um, bands. We're talking like about rubber bands. Like uh, music bands. Like wristbands. Musical bands. Oh, I was thinking like wristbands or armbands or like a headband. There's bands that are creating all of their music with GPT. And they're getting not only lyrics, but they're getting uh, notes and song structures. Does GPT write like, and like melodies. notes and melodies? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And especially 4, like I think GPT-4 will give you straight like sheet music. Damn. And... They're using that to create the AI, and then they're using the AI to be like, uh, you know, the bass player went first, least important guy in the band. Yeah, sure. And they just replace him with AI completely. So the AI, he does all of the bass playing at the show. He does all the bass playing in the studio. He goes home after the studio session. He kisses the bass player's kids on the head. Are you talking about Allen Iverson? No, no, no. The basketball player? No. Not even close to. I'm talking about artificial intelligence. How could, how could artificial which we're not intelligence to be talking like about. physically kiss a man's wife? In a Tesla bot. 
Oh, they're already, they already put it in the Tesla bot? Yeah. It's already out, like joining bands? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. You're in the bot. You're kissing the kids. You're fucking the wife. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can picture that. Um, I don't really want to, but. So next week, we're going to be talking about that. It's going to be great. It's going to be exciting. Tune in for that for sure. But um, Wiki How, great teacher. I feel like if YouTube was like a father to me, then Wiki How was like a drunk uncle. As someone that was never able to attend like a major university and like really only went to community college for a very short period, like Wiki How is my my higher education. You know what I mean? Like my post high school education. Wiki How has taught me how to do all the things that I use in my my career and my day to day life. Yeah, um, it really gives you gives you anything you need. And we are gonna we want to do more riffing for you guys. Obviously, that's what. Everybody wants. Everybody wants us to riff more. Yeah. We want to riff more. We don't know how to riff. Yeah, when we're apparently to riff. we do it, but when we try to be like self aware of it, we we yeah. can't. And now that we are aware that like we're supposed to be riffing, like we have no clue how we're actually going to authentically mm-hmm. do it. It's like what I imagine riding a unicycle would be like. Like if you don't think about it, and you're just kind of like in the in the zone. Then it's easy. But if you think about your balance and where your body is, then you're going to fall. I feel like we're already kind of fallen. So, um, but that's all right because... No, we're going to get it down to a science here because mm-hmm. of, of WikiHow. Yeah, because uh, Act 1 is coming to a wrap. Uh, this is the end of Act 1. So, Not now, but... So we can jump right into rapping now? <clears throat> no, no, no. Oh. After, oh, so shit. this is the final part that we're about to start of Act 1. And then Act 2 will begin after the WikiHow... Um, WikiHow, part of the WikiHow instructional. Okay. On how to write a riff, how to riff, you know? That's what we want to do. We want to riff. So WikiHow says, um, step one, you want to come up with the riff. Well, we need help with that. <laughs> well, yeah, why do they jump right to the, that's the end game, right, is coming they, up with the riff. Do they elaborate on what that entails? Um, determine what sort of riff you want to write. Okay, so we want to do like a funny riff. Yeah, yeah, something just that seems off the cuff, even though it's off the possibly cuff. not. Something that doesn't have to do with AI. Something, you know, impromptu is the, the mm-hmm. French would probably say. Um, impromptu. Yeah, I think they would probably say that. Yeah. Something that um, has to do with like our core values. And um says consider your goals and think about what kind of riff you aim to create uh do you want it to be heavy musicals or stylistically diverse uh don't be afraid to be totally original okay this one says uh listen to your favorite riffs for inspiration so should we go back and like listen to the podcast and then just kind of mimic what we did on a previous episode uh, well, not like mimic it, but maybe use it as inspiration, or maybe like what is a funny. I mean, I bet if we went back like a far enough, riff. I bet if we went back far enough, we could just like redo episodes we already did, and nobody would notice. That's not a bad idea. Just like watch like an old episode and then come mm-hmm. in and try to try to do it like verbatim. Yeah, one that's like back in Lost in the Sauce, and then when we redo it, we just put that one on private so no one could see it, and then it just like. Uh, redoes it and it could almost be like a like a challenge for the the viewers and listeners to go back and figure out which one we redid Mm, i like that uh it'd be like it'd be like evil dead and evil dead 2 how when they made evil dead 2 it was kind of just like a better more serious version of evil dead 1 or i guess less serious but they just kind of like redid the whole thing for people that didn't see the first one because there was no like market. And what it. was like the original? <clears throat> like it wasn't Evil Dead. Like Evil Dead was a sequel to to what? So Evil Dead was a reimagining of of Evil Dead. No, not like like the Evil Dead franchise with with what's his face like Bruce started Campbell? before um House. What was it? House of Dark. House of Darkness. Uh, computer, what film inspired Evil Dead? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, all of them. Did that answer your question? No. <laughs> all, all of didn't. them? This guy's your feedback. 
Oh, okay, never mind. I was thinking Army of Darkness was first, but that's actually the third installment. Yeah, yeah. So Army of Darkness is the sequel to Evil Dead 2. two. And then Evil Dead 1 was just kind of like a shittier version of Evil Dead 2. So they just told the same story, but all the characters were different except for Ash. Yeah, and they had like a little bit more of a budget at that point. They yeah, could make it look they had more little, money. I mean, not much, but and they were all a bunch of college kids, except but Bruce Campbell was like thirty, but he was still like he's in like the guy that's still hung around with everyone with, with kids. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and probably you know hooked up with some of them too. Oh yeah, Bruce Campbell was for sure banging some underage twat, <laughs> underage twat. <laughs> Is that riffing? <laughs> I think so. And I think that was good for the algorithm, too. That won't... Underage twat? Underage yeah, <laughs> twat. Well, that's not going to trigger it like how... like Nobody C- says twat. Like, like, I feel like would, twat you know? could easily slip under the, the yeah. radar because nobody really uses it's for- that. It's forgotten. I'm bringing it back. Twat. <laughs> Underage twat. <laughs> Okay, so um, we could we could probably put in some of our favorite riffs in post. So we'll like, we'll stop. That was funny. So that inspired me. Are you inspired? Oh, yeah, yeah. Those were great riffs. Okay. Um, zone in on your sound. Just got to zone in. Yeah, close your eyes. Start kind of moving your head around. You know, just zoning, just zoning in. Just bob a little bit like this. Zoom. Okay, now you're what's zoning. the sound? You're Where's zoning. the sound coming? Zoning is like, it's like a zoom So sound. that's the sound? So you got to make that sound. Zoom. That's going to help you get in the zone. Yeah, like zoom. Like pretend you're like Professor X, Professor Charles Xavier, and you're like, you're like. Pretend I'm handicapped? Yeah, yeah. That's like a and super. And you're that's using your mind to, to zone in on, on. The juggernaut or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the guy from the X-Men. Yeah. Um, so what does that have to do with riffing? You got to get in your zone. And once you're zoned in, then the riffs just start flowing. They so start once like you a, like focus the rap. energy in your brain and target it towards an enemy yep. to destroy it's the juggernaut them, specifically. The juggernaut yeah. specifically. To destroy him or scramble his circuits or whatever. Yeah. Once you do that, then you're in the then zone. Then you're in the and zone, and then and then the joke. riffs they're just gonna flow like a stream of of a water down a down a <laughs> like a like a creek. Okay. I think that I feel like that started as a riff. That that was like at the beginning it was a riff, and then it went. You know how, um, raffing. Hey. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Dial it back. All right. You're right. Walk it back. Well, it's like, it's uh, it's the other way. It's down. Uh, riff, riff roof, riff raff. The 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 rapper. <coughs> he's a. Can, do you know he's really a construction worker? Yeah, he's a lot of things to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um. So zone in on your sound. See, we he's 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 doing it. He's zoning in right there. Yeah. I, I don't know why it's musical notes. I mean, like, you'd think it would be, I don't know. Something. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe he, maybe his sound, it is kind of like melodic. The, like, so step whoa. four is start composing the riff mentally. Okay. So this is pretty much saying we want to pre-write our, our riffs. It says hum your riff out loud or else... Play around on the guitar until you lock into something concrete. The guitar, no. Are they talking about like a guitar riff? No. Is that what this is? No. Start composing I think your riff I mentally. Think, no, I, <laughs> no, really? I think this article is about guitar. Yeah, yes. Hum your riff look, out Look, loud. the next thing is skip guitar theory. And then he's holding a he's guitar. Holding, he's playing a guitar. God damn it. This is about guitars. Okay, that's my bad. Um, Jerry called in sick and he's not here so I pulled up these articles for the show and I guess I'm just rusty I haven't done it for a long time this is about guitars but um, I, I actually it. we have this guitar now you, picture your mind as the guitar and you're, you're riffing instead of riffing on the guitar you're riffing from your mind with you like is this riffing now are okay. we are we there yet let me riff with my mind guitar <clears throat> Wow. 
like it. A little whammy, whammy bar. I didn't feel anything. Yeah, me either. Um, so yeah, apparently this is about guitars. That's my bad. Let me have. I think I have another one here. So what even does riff mean <coughs> then? Riffing is like joking around about something, like make like making a bit out of uh, something that's not pretty. Planned. Oh, they're talking about our bits. Yeah, they like our bit. Oh. Or do you think that they like? There's no guitar. Is there, is there do a we different... get a guitar in the show? I don't remember what we do on this know. show. So do we have like a d- guitar segment? I guess we have wrenches I, and I, gears. I don't know how to play guitar. So if we do have a guitar segment, I probably don't contribute much to it. I tried to play guitar for a long time, and I can never be really good at it. Yeah, I've, I've tried very little, but I still think that I'd probably be horrible at it. But everybody said that I have guitar fingers. You got the guitar fingers, the spindly, okay. Spindly yeah. fingers. But um, yeah, I traded my guitar for a uh, for a bike. What'd you trade the bike for? Uh, ham spiral spiral cut. See, that feels like you traded down. Did you no. trade back up with the spiral cut? While the bike was broken, the spiral cut was new. So the guitar is sounding better than a broken bike or a spiral cut ham. I guess if you were starving, the spiral cut ham, it's going to feed you and keep you going. But Roach Clip didn't tell me that the bike was broken. So when I traded, it was a good trade. And then it was one of those things to where like you buy a car and then you get like 500 miles out of it. And then something that they like band-aided together and didn't tell you about breaks. And you're like, oh, great. So that's what happened with the bike. He sold me a lemon. And uh, then I traded that up, which depreciated in value a lot. I traded that up for the ham. Now, did you eat the ham or did you trade the ham? I ate the ham. Okay. <clears throat> but I traded the ham for um, Thanksgiving clout. So I provided the ham for now, a Thanksgiving Were you dinner. able to flip that Thanksgiving clout into anything material? Yeah, money. I was able to be like, hey, Uncle Steve... You know, I brought that turkey. That turkey was a pretty pe- penny. Or you brought, it was you brought a ham. ham. <laughs> it was a ham. I also brought a turkey, okay, which well, I got from an, another separate deal that I did. And I was like, "Hey, I brought the meats." You know, so like maybe, Arby's. yeah, brought the meats like Arby's. Arby's. We've got we've got the meats. Do they say that? I think that's their tagline. That yeah. All right. So I said, "I'm like Arby's. You can call me Arby's because I got the meats. Got the meats." And then I said, how about you hit me hit me with 10 racks? With the, no, I was thinking just the five spot, but you got 10 racks? You got $10,000? Yeah. Oh, shit. So um, I did that to everybody in the house one by one, targeted them, waited until they were in a room by themselves, bathroom, you know, whatever. Nothing was off limits. I cornered them, asked them for money, told them I brought the meats, Said I'm Arby's, I'm Arby's. And they they complied? I had a knife. Oh, okay. The knife probably was... Allegedly. They, they said I had a knife. Is this riffing now? Like when we make up like stories, just kind of I randomly? think so. I think but then it turned violent, I think, which, which like isn't traditional riffing. I don't think riffing gets violent, does it? Uh, probably not traditionally, but yeah. I don't think there's specifically a rule that says it can't. True. I don't think there's a hard rule on it one way or the other. So, um, why was I telling the story about the trading and the clout and the, oh, the guitar? That's what it was, right? Ty, are you broken? Yeah, that was the guitar. (laughs) Um, how to have a sense of humor, Wiki How. I think this is probably the closest thing that we can get. Okay. Let's, let's dive in. Because that's what we want to do. We want to... Sense of humor makes you... I mean, doesn't a sense of humor just come to you naturally? Like, I don't know. You can force it, allegedly. Okay. You well, can let's make see. it. This is written by Trudy Griffith. Um, I don't know what her qualifications... LPC? To, she's a professional counselor, so I mean... <clears> like, <throat> I would rather see this, like, written by, like, Theo Vaughn... Or, or like yeah. a second tier comedian, someone that's they're, funny. They're going to teach me how to have a sense of humor, not Trudy Griffith. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She could be funny though. You don't okay. know. Let's see what she's got to say. Uh, step one: understanding humor. You want to identify the benefits of humor. 
Okay. Well, what does she suggest for that? Um, says that there are physical, cognitive, emotional, and social benefits of humor, which include reduced pain and stress, yeah. increased mood and creativity, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. increased friendliness, sure. and happier relationships with others. Absolutely. That's true. And that actually reminds me, uh, I have a great time doing this podcast with you. This is this does all of that. Yeah. This makes me I usually excited, have some laughs makes at me some happy, point. Yep. Have some laughs. It's yep. like a whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. She's off to a good start. Do you think that's Trudy there? Like a picture of her? Yeah, obviously. She's kind of hot. <laughs> um, recognize the difference between being funny and having a sense of humor. Being funny means being able to express humor, perhaps telling a laugh-filled story, a witty pun. What, what is a laugh-filled? Is that like a story where you're frequently laughing as you tell it? I think where you're you're in, inciting laughter oh, uh, okay. frequently. Yeah. yeah. People are laughing throughout. There's not one big bomb at the end like a Dave Chappelle Computer, joke. give us a witty pun. Why did the toilet paper cross the road? Because it was on a roll. Computer, tell us a laugh-filled story. I'm sorry. I don't have a free Audible audiobook for that genre. Try asking me to read you a bedtime story from Audible. Now, all those benefits of, of humor that, that they just told us about, like, computer sometimes makes me feel the opposite of those. Like, he makes me feel rage. He makes me feel depression. Um, he makes me feel, you know, like I just want to put a bullet right through him. Yeah. Um None of those are healthy, really. I think those are like the opposite of what we're aiming for. I feel like the more that we've been spending time with AI and GPT and GPT-4 and Claude and all these all these, these guys, fucking things. Um, computer is just an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He's like a toddler. If you want to give me more details, just say... Computer, shut the fuck up. We were giving you details about why you're fucking stupid, so shut up and listen. Take notes. You just gotta you gotta talk to him like that sometimes. Man, imagine what my file looks like at Amazon. <laughs> like, cause you know, they like log all the shit and they run it through AI. I picture I picture a little guy in a room just listening to us on a headset <laughs> live all the time. Good for him. He's getting the podcast early. Yeah, yeah. Um he hears the riffing before anybody else. And the raffing, possibly. Possibly. Because maybe. we are on to that stage where raffing is a new level above riffing. Because look. Um, Anyone can riff, but it takes a riff master yeah. to 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 move raff. into the raffing tier to fully raff. And there's no way you can really describe what a raff is. You know it when you see it. It's like art. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. That's now, a, that's a raff. Yeah, exactly. And what I like to say is, uh, a raff ain't nothing but a riff with a laugh. You know. Oh, I see what you did there. Because a riff, it could be funny. It's it like could a, be yeah. witty. It could be, oh, I see what you did there. But I'm talking a riff with laugh. This one, it gets a pop every time. So we are going to promise to you right now that by the end of this show, we will laugh. And we will do something that will make you laugh out loud so hard. It's possible we've already been raffing and we just don't realize it. We could have. But, but we're going to have to. I don't think we I don't think we've raffed once. Yeah. And I don't think we're going to because I put a lot yeah. of pressure on us just yeah. now to do it. Set the bar real high. So uh, we will provide that. And if we do not, then. Sound off in the comments and let us know. Did we raff? Did, yeah. we, did we make you laugh with our riffing? Yeah. Did you raff? If you laughed once even a little bit, that's a raff. Okay. Now I'm bending the rules. Also, of, let us know what what do you think is funny? <clears throat> like, what type of humor, and what can we do to make you laugh <laughs> yeah. and find us hysterical? We like to we like to learn, much like AI, and fine tune our algorithm and figure out what makes you laugh. And say if you like jokes about um about uh the the Warner Brothers production company. Like um, like that T-shirt that says, "If you see the police, warn a brother." <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's perfect. Yeah. So if you like that, then we want to try to like you know maybe wear those shirts. I could sneak one of those stickers on the laptop, you know, and have it there. Uh, we want to lean into that for you, and if we could lean into every listener's thing and into whatever it is that they're into. I feel like we probably could because we don't have that many listeners. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if everyone that sounds off below and lets us know what they find funny, which will be like maybe two or three people, probably mm -hmm. free candy and maybe like vocal one or two listeners. Others. Yeah, we have very few, very few vocal listeners. Yeah. 
Now, stats wise, we have enough to to make it still worthy for us to come come back and do this every. No, week. you guys just don't say. And I get that because I don't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I listen to a bunch of podcasts and they're they're constantly yeah. like requesting comments and feedback, and I don't deliver on that. Not once. Not once. Not once. Shows that I that I love and yeah. that I like yeah. subscribe to and look forward to every week. Not one time. Yep. So um, we will definitely be able to lean into the vocal uh listeners out there so you let us know we have no um we got no qualms with that we also have no uh integrity when it comes to leaning and joking about things for you you could write the jokes for us you could send us scripts we'll read the scripts we could even get chat gpt in it's like fish it. maybe chat gpt no no we're not gonna <laughs> do that yeah no ai stuff the ai is next week but we still can use this wiki how article about how to be funny or whatever. I think that's always good, especially yeah. if we want to raft more. So we want to recognize the difference, blah, blah, blah. Damn, Trudy. Find your funny bone. She's got, she is she's hot. got some tits, man. And yeah. She's, yeah. <laughs> <She's this. laughs> Find your funny bone. What makes you laugh? Well, your funny bone's in your elbow, right? Yeah, and there's nothing funny about it because you hit it and it hurts real bad. Oh, nothing funny about that. Nothing. People say that. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know what I'm starting to find out is that, you know, there's like sayings like that, like, uh, like you, like perfect example, you hit your funny bone. Oh, I hit my funny bone. Oh, nothing funny about that. Or someone else would say like, oh yeah, nothing funny about it. So if you were to poll like a hundred people, I'd say half the people had never heard that. Think so? I think that we're getting to the age to where all of these sayings that we had when we were kids, because think about you learned that when you were like a child, like in your teens or preteens when you hit your, what are you looking at? I was looking for a meme that was really, <coughs> I can't find it. I was going to recite a meme. So like in your teens or preteens, you would hit your funny bone, a parent or an uncle or someone like that would say it to you. Yeah. And then that's where you learned it. That's where you picked it up. It followed you through high school and your 20s. And then uh, now we're getting to the point to where people don't know those things. Like even people that are like our age that just grew up in a different place, maybe. Do you think that the funny bone joke is going to become like lost media? Yeah. It's where it's just, you know, because I mean, there's people like me that are going to pass that on to my kids. As soon as I see my kids hit their elbow, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And then I think that there's a lot of times when people will drop classic jokes from culture like that. And a lot of people have never heard it and think it's great. It goes right over their head. No, they think it's great and that you made it up. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, what? That's brilliant. "That's That's a great riff. I've never heard that. It's a great riff. So that's another thing that we can maybe do is sneak in like less known riffs by other people. Yeah. That I are mean, that are tried and true funny. Yeah, it's like a cover song. You know what I mean? Like everybody likes a good yeah. cover song. It doesn't have to be the original artist. Yeah, it's, an inspiration. So if we were to be like, what's the deal with airplane peanuts? Yeah. They're in a little bag. Actually, they're non existent now. They don't have airplane peanuts anymore, right? Because uh-huh. of peanut allergies. They give out pretzels. Yeah, that that sounds right. What's the deal with airplane pretzels? What's the deal with airplane pretzels? It's, I mean, what? It, computer, what's the deal with airplane pretzels? I could not find any deals on that. Would you like to hear top deals? Yes. Here are the top Amazon deals. Moco case fit iPad nine point seven fifth six generation. Computer, stop. Computer, say hello. Hello. Oh, that didn't work. Not at all. I thought that was gonna work a lot. Wait, check. I thought that was gonna work a lot better, but I think you have to be human. That's the one thing that. That's one thing that the AI can't do yet. That only humans can do is use megaphones. Yeah. Yep. And probably microphones too, because a megaphone is just a microphone with a speaker on it. Right. So AI and robots can't use microphones. Because they're not like uh, they have no souls. Do you think that the ability to use a <clears throat> microphone comes from deep down in your soul? Well, I mean, they have 
they kind of don't need microphones because they could just bypass that and hook directly to the speaker system. But um, they still can't do it. So in a situation like this where we want computer to sound off into the megaphone. He can't do it. Can't do it. He's There's a lot of stuff he can't do, do though. I feel like if we maybe had like a more talented and smart computer try to do it, mm-hmm. they'd probably succeed. I think Sorry. it might just be. I don't know that one. Probably. We should get a new one. Oh, I've been saying that. A new producer and a new um, computer. <laughs> yeah, how host. does Jerry call in sick on the day of the podcast? It's one day a week. He's here every other day of the week. Now, wouldn't it explain a lot if it turns out that um, computer was just Jerry being like, you know, like um, like in The Wizard of Oz. like Trying how to like influence There was just a little show. guy in like a, a, a shack controlling the, the wizard. Can you say it again? And he says, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. What whatever. if Jerry's the man behind computer? Backs. And see, he's... Computer, lines. stop! He's trying to... Computer, like, stop! Computer! Computer, stop! Computer! Computer, stop! Stop! He's trying to change yeah, the subject. He's he trying to... Oh, yeah. Did you I hear think about we're onto something book? here. I think we're onto yeah, something here. Yeah, that's weird. Um, yeah, that really could be the case because Jerry has had no influence on the show whatsoever. And he just does what we tell him. And computer has been in here trying to change things up, trying to throw a bunch of different ideas in. I don't know. Sorry, folks. Uh, That's something that we'll have to figure out later off the show. But um, next step, we're going to want to watch and learn. Yeah. So this is suggesting. So we actually just did this. We went to a comedy show. We did. Yeah. Now, this is suggesting that you watch like Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, a bunch of like old old comedians and watch meet the parents and young frankenstein yeah you know and monty python i don't know if that's gonna do it for today's youth and I blazing think gonna, saddles i think they're gonna want to see something a little more relative to the current times yeah like uh like what what's a new comedy movie uh, do they oh, still make them fuck i feel like i haven't seen a good comedy movie in forever oh i hit my knee i hit my knee you on hit the your, sharp. your funny bone <laughs> you hit your funny bone? Was that your funny? There's nothing funny about that. There really isn't it because it's my knee funny bone and not my elbow one, but it was funny. It was the funny one. Um, Maybe that was a raft, dude. Because that was real. I hit, my, I hit my funny bone for real. That wasn't like a bit that I did for the funny bone thing. I was just trying to scoot forward and I hurt myself. Um, So... This is saying that you should watch Blazing Saddles, Trading Places, Finding Nemo. I mean, yeah, yeah Finding that's Nemo kind of like funny. a like an outlier <clears throat> amongst those other ones. Yeah, imagine if you're like uh, what, showing this list of movies to your kid, and you're like, "All right, now let's watch Finding Nemo," and then after that, we'll watch Blazing Bride, Saddles, Bridesmaids. Yeah. It's um, kind of weird that like Bridesmaids and Finding Nemo are the only semi-contemporary ones and the rest are like old. Because they don't make good, funny movies yeah, anymore. I feel like, you know, again, Trudy's writing this. So like, I mean, maybe this is what Trudy finds amusing, you know, which is fine for her, I guess. See, but I, uh, I kind of agree with her in the way that like, I think the last good era of funny movies was like the super bad era. The, um, and like Pineapple Express, like those kind of things. The Judd Apatow era. Yeah, the Judd Apatow. And, um, yeah, and even some of those like don't really hold up if you watch them now. And then when, I don't want to sound like super red-pilled or anything, but when cancel culture started, you then... Can't, you can't be too funny anymore. You can't be too You're gonna funny. You're going to hurt someone's feelings. People had to tone things down. can't make down, fun of anybody, so like, yeah. And yeah. things couldn't be crazy and offensive, so people were scared to cross the line, especially at big production companies yep. and shit. So everything just got dumb, and it turned into like, are we there yet, too? I agree. So, you know, like you, you, even Mrs. Doubtfire, you couldn't you couldn't put Mrs. Doubtfire out in 2023 because the trans community is going to yeah. be like they're making fun of us. It's like, no, he's trying to get his kids back by posing as a as a British nanny. This has nothing to do with the this trannies. Has nothing to do with you. Uh, yeah. So they can't do comedy like they used to. And then comedy turned into a new thing. But I feel like it's coming back. R.I.P. to comedy. I feel like oh, comedy. I think it's you on think the it's upswing, gonna, okay. and I think that like offensive humor is becoming like a public 
publicly accepted thing. I feel like you can't you can't put a, a censorship on on comedy. You know what I mean? That has to be like the last mm-hmm. thing that we that we leave. The last bastion of free speech in our yeah. society has to be comedy. Yeah. Um. So, <clears throat> I think that uh, I think that funny movies will be coming back. There was little like sneaky ones in there. That this one was old, but Office Christmas Party I think was uh was good. I didn't like that. You didn't like it? No, I didn't. I didn't find that amusing. Uh. There's got to be other funny movies that came out. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been there's it's been a dude. while, huh? Yeah, it has. It's kind of crazy. So we uh, damn Trudy. Instead of watching these movies, we went to. Do you think the the carpet matches the drapes on Trudy? <laughs> uh, no, I think that her hair is dyed, uh. and I think that her her carpet is. Uh, Black. Black, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we went to a stand-up comedy show, Rick Storer. The benefit, the that benefit we talked of Rick about, Storer. About last he had week, died. Yeah. We talked about how we were about to go to it, right? Yeah, we were trying to raise money. What for it was like his funeral? That's what it that is what it looked like a lot. It looked like Rick had died and it was like a benefit show for It was for like him a wake and his funeral. People were remembering yeah. him. But it actually uh his mom had died. And she was a she was a big part of his of his act and of his career. She was in uh, that Theo Vaughn episode with him, and she was also in Bad Trip with him, the Eric Andre movie. And he is now moving to Fresno, which is a notoriously horrible place. If you're not from California. Fresno is... It's a stain on the fabric of California. Yeah. It's almost as bad as Bakersfield. Why do you have a bunch of dildos in your targeted ads? Is that what those are? Are yeah. those like butt plugs and dildos? Yeah, that's a butt plug. And, and there's like a little onesie about butt. <laughs> yeah. Like a, a, a baby onesie about yeah. butt and then a bunch of butt plugs. That's my Wish app, man. Yeah. Don't worry about what I'm buying off Wish. They know dude. you all too well, I guess. <laughs> they really do. Um... But what was I talking about before I was interrupted by the dildos? Um, you were talking about Rick. Oh yeah, Rick and his mom, his <laughs> late mom. <laughs> mom. Yeah, his late mom, dearly departed. Um, so we did this show. We were we went to the show and we sat uh, in the audience and we supported uh, the benefit and the remembering Rick because he's moving to Fresno, which is the worst place. Oh, it's horrible. You don't want to go there. I had to go there a couple of months ago to pick something up and just. I mean, just an unpleasant experience. I remember I stopped in like a strip mall to grab like a Red Bull or something, and it felt like it just felt unsafe. And then yeah. I went into a um, a grocery store, and it was like a grocery store from like the like nineteen eighty five. I swear, it was like an old timey grocery store, and it just felt really gross. The air tasted funny. The air kind of tasted like stale, like a like a stale biscuit. <coughs> Just a, a real stale biscuit of a of a town there. You, you okay? You okay, Cheech? This guy. Yeah, I'm smoking that back surgery weed. Oh shit. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean about because a grocery store, like even the even the nice grocery stores, look kind of bland and drab on the outside. Yeah. So when you walk up to the grocery store, it looks normal enough. They all look the same. And if you're in like a downtown area, then you imagine that you would walk into your everyday Albertson, Safeway, whatever. No, this was like a Williams Brothers. Yeah. And this, they're like uh, decrepit. It has like a like a bodega feel. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what it felt but like. you're in it, a like chain a- mm-hmm. grocery store. Like they just hadn't had the money to to update or refurbish anything Ever. in the better part of thirty years. Yeah, it's almost like <clears throat> like it shut down for twenty years and then someone bought it as is. Yeah, and they're just like, screw it, we don't and need to do like, much. Yeah, let's just stock it up. Stock it up, and we're good to go. Stock I it mean, up, like, baby. what do we what do we need? Like working lights for or, mm-hmm. or toilets? Fix the fridge and stock it up. So then you want to learn a joke. 
for example, try something like this. What do you call a line of rabbits walking backward? What? A receding hairline. Oh. A receding hairline. Oh, I get it. What did the football coach say to the broken vending machine? Uh, what? Give me my quarterback. Like the, like the from the team. Yeah, but I mean, he he put his he put his coin into the the broken vending machine. It didn't give him his soda pop. So well, he's the vending asking, machine has the quarterback. No, the vending machine has his quarter. He wants his quarter back. He wants his twenty five cents back. Like he wants the quarterback, like sexually. Yes. Or the, or the yeah, quarterback's no, that, in the machine, and he wants the quarterback. Could it possibly be all three? That he wants this change. He wants the quarter. The quarterback's in the machine. He wants him back. <laughs> he wants his his coin back. Mm-hmm. That and he he's used. also attracted. He, he put a coin in there to try to retrieve the quarterback from the to vending push machine. It through. And you know, he just took <laughs> the coin. So now he's out a quarterback and a quarter, and also um, what was the third thing? He wants to fuck the quarterback. Oh yeah, yeah. He's lusting after his quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It could be. Could be all three. Um, was that? So, I think that was riffing. I think we just riffed there. Dude, I think we did. I think that was a riff. That was good. Um, I don't know if it was quite raft status. No, I definitely wasn't. But we riffed. Uh, find the humor in commonalities. When looking for something to say, comment on the weather. For example, if it doesn't stop snowing, I'm going to have to ski to work. <laughs> oh. And that's funny because obviously you're not going to physically ski to work. That would just be silly. But it's snowing... So you you probably could mm-hmm. you could ski to work if there you probably, wanted to. There probably are towns and communities, mountain towns, where people do ski to work. Well, then that, it makes it not a joke. Then it's just a serious comment. So I don't see I don't see the humor in that. Yeah, you're making light of like a weather problem that is keeping people off the roads and not able to drive to work. I mean, what an inconvenience that would be to have to ski to work. So really, you're just you're just kind of yeah. you're making light of a, of a serious. Topic, um, which you, do, you don't want to do that. Yeah, you don't want to. We do need that. to. We need to censor our humor. Yeah, you don't want to take something serious and then try to twist that into humor. Yeah. You want to take something that's classically funny and just bring it up. You know, uh, you also want to surround yourself with funny people, and that could be difficult because, like, I would love to have a bunch of friends that were constantly making me laugh, but the fact is, I don't. I have very few. Like you, you make me laugh sometimes. Like maybe that that might be it. Maybe Nick. Every once in a while, Nick will say something, and he's usually just sending like a meme or something. It's not like an original thought that he has. But yeah. aside from that, I don't know too many funny people, which is really, I mean, it's a shame. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'll tell you about a. Uh, I I think I make myself laugh more than anybody else around. Me. <laughs> yeah, and and that's not that's not part of the rule. The rule says surround yourself with funny people. But hey, this does say check out stand-up comedians and watch videos online, which we did. Focus on their delivery and the topics and how they turn everyday things into something humorous. So mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess we accomplished that one already. So what's a let's let's try let's do a riff. Let's try a riff. Let's what's an everyday thing? Um, give me an everyday thing. Skiing to work. Skiing to work. Okay. Now give me a place. The desert. And give me a color. And the color yellow. Uh, all right. Man, if it doesn't stop snowing, I'm going to have to start skiing to work. But you're in the desert. There's no There's no snow. It's not snowing. If it starts snowing. It's not going to start snowing. We're in the desert. <laughs> it hasn't snowed in here in 100 years. <laughs> well, if it, <clears throat> if it were to start snowing. I mean, that's a, that's a big, a big, okay, if it no, were. No. Here we go. Let me set the scene. How about this? I'll set the scene, okay? So we're in a public park. It's uh it's Christmas time. It's December uh December twelfth, right? There's a bunch of people in the park. I'm ringing a bell like the um <clears throat> Salvation Army guy. That's okay. Right. So you're standing on the corner in the park. Ring. There's people out Ring. there, they got stands, they're selling hot cocoa. They got cider. People are singing Christmas carols. They got displays and stuff. And then... They're jolly. Everyone's jolly. There's one of those machines that can make snow. You know, they like yeah. put ice in it and it shoots yeah, the yeah. snow sure. out. Yeah, Of course. So they put up the hay bales, right? They start putting snow on it and it's just like piling out, right? Piling out, covering the hay bales super quick. 
It keeps coming. They keep feeding ice in it. The snow is like starting to reach into other people's tents. You know what I mean? And getting and, way too much snow. And you're running late to work. Now, you, you gotta, look at all this snow coming out. You look at the stranger that's next to you that's also looking at the snow. You guys look at each other. You're like, you believe this? And you go, man, if it keeps snowing like this, I'm going to have to ski to work. You have a briefcase. You have a suit. But what, what do you have, you have skis? skis. <laughs> you, yeah, have skis. you have okay. skis. Yeah. I guess in that very <laughs> specific instance, like that would that would be applicable. Okay. Um so what was that? Surround yourself with funny people <laughs> was that part of that step? Good. Practice. I think that's what practice makes perfect. We've done almost seven hundred episodes of the show. Yep. So that's practice. Uh be careful not to offend. Oh, okay, we people. Yeah. Okay, wow. Wow. Now this is written in green, which wow. I think means that Oh, this just means that it's we a hyperlink to, a, to how to not offend to people. how to not offend people. We're gonna say that that is an optional rule that you could follow. Yeah, I would I would suggest that. I mean, this is saying put down humor or aggressive humor used to criticize is is bad, mm-hmm. and I would I would argue that that's the best kind of humor. Yeah, that's funny. Um, looking on the bright side of life, learn to laugh. You know. Which I think that's, we've done. It's kind of redundant here. You know what I mean? Like, this is a wiki how on having a sense of humor, and you're, you're telling me one of the steps is learn to laugh. Like, okay. Yeah. Trudy. Damn, Trudy. And where's Trudy? Where is Trudy? Damn. Why is, where did Trudy go? Where did you, There's no more Trudy picks? Uh, laugh instead of reacting. Which I think laughter is kind of a reaction. These people are way worse than Trudy. Yeah. Whoever this guy is. Um, There's Trudy. There's Trudy. Damn, Trudy. (laughs) Let go of defensiveness. Okay, Trudy's back. Accept yourself. Which I think is an important rule for everyone. You know, accept yourself. You only got one self. Yeah, especially if Trudy's around. You're going to want to impress her. You're going to want to make her laugh. You're going to want to seem like you're cool. Mm -hmm. You know, you're... yeah. Yeah. So... You want to accept yourself because that'll give you confidence, and confidence is key. That's really all you need. Yeah, Tr- Trudy's not trying to go home with some jackass that, that has self-doubt. Yeah. You want to accept yourself, and that is literally the one, one of the only things in life that you can't change. You can't change yourself. You can't trade into a different life, a different body, a different set of circumstances. You're you. You're you, baby. You got to live with your flaws. You got to live with it. So accept yourself. Um, that's something that you should all do, and then we could then we could all riff. You know, we could all riff together. Yeah. Um, give others a break. These are this is like why is looking on the bright side a part of? Yeah, I don't know. This kind of this kind of went off the of rails humor. here. It really did. Well, that's all right. That's enough of that. Trudy's gone, and um, so are we. So are we hopefully hopefully we uh hopefully we raft in there. Sound off, let us know, yeah, give us a time code. I, mean, I know we hit a couple riffs, but I, yeah. I'm not sure about the raffing. So if you did, you know, if you did get a, a laugh out of our riffing. Give us time code. Yeah. We love you. Bye. Natural habitat recording.